And we are back. So now we're going to get into the actual strategy of doing this Facebook organic marketing. And before we even get started with the actual posts themselves, there's some rules that you want to understand and you want to keep and you want to know for posting on your profile. And uh, we talked about this a little bit during the Q&A part here. But number one, you never directly link on your post. Like I said, Facebook wants you, wants everyone to stay on Facebook. So the last thing that they want is for you to link people off of Facebook. That does not make them any money. They're very unhappy and they will kill the reach of your post because it has links in it. So you never, ever, ever want to do that. That is number one, the worst thing you can possibly do. Um, so wanted to make that the first thing. Number two, try not to tag anyone. Because remember, one of the rules was uh, Facebook wants an enjoyable experience for its users. So they find that, uh, you know, you can tag sparsely here and there, but they find that a lot of times if people get tagged, it's annoying. You know, people like people don't like to be tagged because it's like, especially if you tag a whole bunch of people, it's like, what? You know, and, and they don't want that. They want completely organic. Everything happens naturally. So try, that's why I put try, try not to tag anyone. Uh, you see, I do it sometimes when I congratulate one of you guys for getting a commission or whatever. That's okay. But try to just keep it to a minimum. Um, and so, yeah unless there are specific people you want to see your post and you're okay with getting a little re little reach. Um, they just typically those tagged posts don't get a whole ton of reach because again, they're thinking that it's going to be annoying um, and it's not an enjoyable experience. Don't use stock photos. Facebook is very, very smart. Meaning the algorithm is very, very smart. And it can pick up when you've done like copy and paste photos, enjoyable experience. I keep like punching that into your head. So Facebook wants you to share photos, but it wants you to share real photos, authentic photos, you on vacation with your family, you sitting at the computer working on your business, you making a funny face, you know, whatever it may be. But if you're just using a photo of like, you know, um, a stock photo, like copy and paste from like a website somewhere, they know where it came from. They can actually like figure out and read where that photo came from and that you just copied and pasted it. So uh yeah, try to avoid doing that. It get those posts get very little reach. Number four, reply to every comment you get to increase the chance of your future posts being seen by that person. Okay, and we're gonna get more deep into that strategy. This is how we're gonna say, listen, we're gonna really start getting into gaming the system a little bit here. You're gonna see why you wanna do that. Someone comments on your post you know, put a heart, put laugh, don't put just like, like doesn't get a whole lot of uh, respect, but like a heart, a laugh, a shock face, whatever those little reactions are. And then comment, comment on, on what they said, Com reply to what they said, because it's a higher chance that in your future posts, they will, that person will see your post. Okay. And here's why. Okay. Uh, what happens when you make a post? I want you to keep this picture in your head what actually happens when you post on Facebook right now, forget business aside right now, what happens when you post on Facebook, Facebook's algorithm collects data on you. It collects data as far as who you interact with on a daily basis. And it considers those people whom you interact with the most, they must be close, you know, relatives, close friends, the people closest to you are the people who are going to see your post first. Okay. And that's step one. So as soon as you post something, whether it be a video yourself, uh, smiling or, uh, you know, words, your closest friends are going to see that first. Who are your closest friends? The people you interact with the most on Facebook. That's how they, that's how they figure it out. They have no idea who you know in real life. There's no way of them knowing you guys like, you know, uh, met back in high school. They don't know that. Okay. All they know is how much you interact with each other, how much you comment on each other's posts, how much you chat and messenger. They can track all these things. And those are the people who are going to see your post first. Okay. So level number two, they're going to reach your acquaintances. That post is going to now, it's going to now spread out to the people you talk with a little less, right? 
It considers these people your acquaintances. Maybe you talk every once in a while. You said hi a few weeks ago, whatever. You know, uh, you're not the closest of friends, but it can tell that you you talk here and there, right? So that's who's going to see your post next. At every stage here, Facebook is is figuring out how engaging this post is. Because remember, enjoyable experience. So at step one, how many comments did you get? How many reactions did you get? Did you get people sharing on it? Uh, did you get a lot of um, you know people watching your video? If it's like a live video, what did you get? So it decides, okay, it seems really engaging. Let's show this to their acquaintances. Let's spread this out and show it to more people. And then it happens again. The same process repeats. How many people commented? How many people loved it? How many people laughed? How many people watched the video? If it's alive or how many tuned in? It measures these things. It's always measuring. You know, it's a computer. And it figures out, okay, more people like that than not. So let's spread this out to level number three, complete strangers. People you probably never talked to, or maybe you talked to once, you said hi, and that was it. It's going to show your post to those people. Because Facebook saying, wow, this is a really engaging post. People are loving it. They're laughing. They're sharing it, they're whatever. So let's spread this all the way out to people he barely ever talks to or she barely ever talks to. Okay. So knowing this and understanding this kind of top down perspective of what happens when you post, this is why you don't need ads. And if you know how to game the system, then you can get this effect every time that you post. Okay. So. How does the algorithm decide this? A short answer is speed of engagement. Like I said, what percentage of views get a reaction? Views meaning how many people see your post. They see your post, what do they do? Do they just scroll past it? Do they ignore it? Or do they comment? Do they like it? Do they share it? Do they go ape shit about it? Do they watch the video if it's a video? You know, knowing this is how you game the system. So you want people to respond to your post as much as possible, because then you know, okay, great. Then more people are going to see this post. Okay. So let's do some Facebook profile hygiene. Right now you might have a profile or you're thinking of starting a new one, whichever one it may be. Here's some hygiene tips for you. We got to clean it up. Okay. Uh, when you're talking about an email list, when you're doing email marketing, they call it email hygiene. The same thing goes for your profile on Facebook because now we're using Facebook as our sales funnel. So number one, start deleting friends whom are not or never will be interested in your posts. So you might be doing affiliate marketing where you're doing affiliate marketing for some kind of fitness offer or weight loss or whatever, but you know that your cousin is anti-fitness. I don't know why, but <laughs> your cousin just hates everything fitness related. They're never going to buy any of your stuff. They're never going to look at it. They never talk to you. They hate you. I don't know what it is, but get rid of that cousin. Just, just delete them because it's, it's not going to benefit you, your post, your business, nothing. Just delete people who don't, who are never going to be interested in your stuff. Get rid of them now. Okay. The next thing, make your banner and your bio look professional. Okay. Get some nice photos, not a profile picture of your dog or a cartoon or like, you know, this is business media. Okay. Like I put here, no longer do you have social media, you have business media. People are not going to do business with someone who can't even show their face on their profile. Right. It's going to be, it's maybe you'll make a sale. I don't know, but it's probably a much safer bet if you look like a professional and look like you know what you're doing, not like a picture of like deputy dog or something like that. It's like, what the hell? You know, it's like, who, who is this person telling me I should, you know, buy this relationship product or whatever it is that you're selling, you know? Um, so it's just a much harder sell. So if people land on your profile and they're like, hey, who is this person? It should look like a nice profile, okay? All right. Now, one of the keys to understand here, I call this the circle of engagement, okay? One of the ways that Facebook, like I said, knows who your close friends are is do you engage? Do you guys talk to each other? Do you comment on each other's posts? Do you like each other's posts? Do you share each other's posts? How much do you actually interact together on Facebook? Knowing that, like really let that sink in. Knowing that, aha, I can game the system then. Even if I really don't even know this person, maybe I like, <laughs> maybe they're just, 
you know, somebody living in, you know, like China somewhere. I don't know that person, but if I engage with their post enough and they engage back with my post enough, Facebook's going to think we know each other and start showing my post to them more often. Okay. So make it a post, a point of you, of you, not just posting, but you engaging with others too. This is why I said earlier, when someone comments on your posts, make sure that you reply to those comments. Cause what is that showing Facebook? You guys must know each other, right? The more that you engage back and forth, you guys must know each other. Okay, cool. So the next time you post, I'm going to show your post to this person. Okay, you see how we game it? Give me a one in the chat if you understand that concept there. Okay. Facebook will assume that you know each other. So that's why I do uh, what I call engagement trains. I don't like post links anywhere on the post, not in the comment, not nothing, because I want people to comment as much as possible in order to get my thing, because I'm going to reply to them. And if I reply to them, the chances are next time that I make a post, they're going to see my post. Okay, so I'm like setting them up to knock them down. So this post, I might not be, you'll see a little bit more of the strategy here in a minute, but this post, I might not be selling anything. This post, I might be just giving away free stuff. Hey guys, do you want this free uh, chat, messenger chat thing script that I have? It's awesome. Who wants it? Comment, yes, me down below. And you see all these people saying, yes, me, yes, me. I reply to them. I say, okay, cool. Check out your inbox, man. Da -da -da -da. Awesome. I'll send it to them in messenger. Right. And the reason I might do this is because tomorrow I'm going to have a pitch tomorrow. I'm going to say, Hey, I got this thing. It's $27 and it's like, got all these bonuses and it's awesome. Those people are going to see my post because they just recently interacted with me. Facebook thinks we're close friends. So I might do that for like a week and just get a lot of people interacting with me until I boom, knock them down with the sale. Does that make sense? Does that, is that clicking a little bit? Let me see here. There's some, oh, there's ones in this. Okay, there's a lot of ones. Everybody's understanding it. Okay. <laughs> I was going to think of like different ways to explain it, but yeah, okay. Everybody's smart. They get it. Awesome. All right. So be strategic. A little bit of what I was talking about. All right. So because you know this, because you know that your posts are going to be shown to your closest friends first and then your acquaintances and so on, let's increase the size of your closest friends. If you have a thousand members on your friends list and you're always engaging with like 500 of them every day, you have 500 people that are going to see your post every time you post. Think about that. It's nuts, <laughs> right? For free. Like you don't even have to pay for ads. So number one, 15 minutes before you post, start engaging with your feed, go through your feed. All right. Go through it and just start engaging with it. Start commenting on other people's stuff, you know, give that love back. Uh, start harding and laughing and reacting and liking and sharing. Start doing all that because you're warming up your feed. They call this warming up. Those people are more likely to now see your post because you're going back and forth with them, right? Uh, number two, decide on your promotion cycle. Some days you'll go for reach. How many people can I interact with? How many people can I get engagement with? And other days you'll go for conversions, other days, okay, now that I've interacted with a crap ton of people, a lot of people are going to see my next post like they've been seeing all week or the next, the, the last few days, whatever your cycle is, okay? My cycle is typically three weeks of engagement, one week of selling. That's my, that's my thing, but, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but those times you go for conversion, meaning those times you make a, a post about some uh, course you have coming out, some affiliate offer thing that you have, like everybody, I got this awesome thing, comment below if you want in, okay? If you do this right, a lot of people are gonna see that post, right? For free, because you game the system, okay? Um, where do I get ideas for content? So number one, know your audience, number two, Know your curriculum. And what I mean is your niche, right? What is the stuff you teach? This is another reason why you should always pick a niche that you're actually passionate about. That way you always have content ideas. Just a lot of your passing ideas throughout the day, just stuff that you think about, ha, ah, I can do this because you love that stuff. It's just what you're about. 
okay? Uh, your customers, wins, stories, insights, sales calls, objections. I get on sales calls all the time. I don't really care if I make the sale or not because I'm taking notes down. And a lot of times I'll get ideas for content just from the sales call, like stuff that they tell me. I'm like, oh, that would make a good, <laughs> that would make a pretty good piece of content. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, I get ideas from everywhere. Um, content you consume. A lot of you are fans of your niche and, you know, what, whatever you're into, uh, stuff that you consume. Maybe you went to a, a masterclass like this and you learned a lot and you're like, hey, guys, I learned a lot from this masterclass. Check out this thing I learned. You know, that's it. There's content ideas everywhere. So the idea behind your post is to create hype. So how do we create hype? And here are the five types of content that we kind of spin out there. We're going to share results, share the results, share the work, share the value. My favorite, ask questions. I do that a lot. <laughs> it gets a crap ton of engagement. Um, and make invitations is number five. Okay. Um, the five content archetypes, there should be four, the four content archetypes, I'm just retarded. So <laughs> number one is images, right? Facebook likes pictures, they like images, they like drawings, they like photos, they like whatever. Uh, number two is video. Facebook loves live video. Go live if you haven't started doing it already. Facebook loves lives, okay? Because it's a very native piece of content to the platform. They love you going live. They love videos because they keep people on Facebook, right? That's what they love. So going live is great. If you want to go live every day, go live every day. It's awesome. Um, it's also a great way for you to practice some of those skills that we said to fall in love with. Marketing, sales, all that good stuff. Um, number three, short form text. Don't underestimate the, the concept of just showing like a short story or like a, a little quick three tips or whatever, uh, because people like um, easily consumable uh, information, right? Very short. I know I do. If I see number four, a long form text, which is another option. If I see like, <laughs> you know, a long story that goes on for like two pages, I don't read it. I skip it. But some people do. Some people like reading long, enormously long posts. Um, I'm not one of those people, but it's in there if you want to be like a long post kind of writer. Um, so let's go over some of these in depth. Share the results. What does it look like? Okay. I hope you're taking notes because this is where uh, note taking is going to be a good thing. All right. So share the results. What does it look like? Case studies, testimonials. Um, if you don't have testimonials of like your own customers or whatever, it could be just uh, your own testimonials, like stuff that you, you, know, you can tell your own testimony about things. Um, screenshots. I like to do that sometimes. Stories. Um, I was here and now I'm there. I'm going to show you some examples in a second. And why it works. It shows the gap. So your audience might be far away from the, the results that they want. But when they see you posting about results in all these different ways, they're saying to themselves, oh man, I wish I could be there. Right? Remember what I said at the beginning of this training, understanding why. Don't just post stuff just willy-nilly. Why am I posting this? Results posts show the gap. You guys are here and here's where I am or here's where uh, an industry leader is or you know whatever you wanna write about. Don't you wanna be here? Yes, I do, okay. They, that's marketing, showing the gap. And still trust. You're showing results. People wanna know that something actually works. So, hey, I trust that this works because they're showing their results. Proof, it's another big thing. It creates desire. So they see these results, they see everything you're doing and they're saying, holy moly, this thing is awesome. I, like, I want it, you know? So what does it look like? Kind of like this. I think that, uh, that Jake is here. He'll recognize the one all the way on the right. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, so you get results, you get testimonials. Uh, some of these here in the middle, that's my old mentor there. Uh, when I used to actually do affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing, I used to promote his course. And you see there, I was making like thousand dollar days and stuff like that. Um, there's one that's a testimonial from a, a chat that I had with, uh, with a client of mine. And she said that, you know, I'm so happy that I found you, blah, blah, blah. So I can repost this stuff. Doesn't have to be like money. That's the thing. If you don't make money, 
and you're like, oh, I don't know what to post, like testimonials and results and stuff. It doesn't have to be that. A lot of times, depending on what niche you're in, beginners just see the smallest thing as like a huge thing. It still shows the gap. Even the smallest win that you have. Hey, I made my first uh, video today on YouTube and you can like post a picture of it. And like, whoa, that's awesome. Like I'll, I could never do video. How do you do that? To a beginner, that's hard. They're looking at you like, whoa, you must be like on the mountaintop. That's amazing. So it doesn't have to be something over the top. Okay. Uh, share the work. What does share the work look like? It's insights. Uh, what are you working on? pull back the curtain, right? Between the scenes, in the moment thoughts. Uh, you guys are working on your business, right? You guys are going through your daily routine, your daily life. You guys are working on stuff. Be human. It's Facebook. You know, be a regular person. Show pictures of yourself, you know, booting up your computer. Show pictures of yourself trying your product or, or you know, whatever, playing with your dog. It could be anything, like taking time off work today, you know, and that's it. It's like, whoa, cool. You know, he has a dog similar to mine. It's like, you know, it's not that complicated. If you show up every day, other people will show up every day, you know, but if you take like a two week long break, it cools down the algorithm and it has no idea who your friends are anymore. It's not going to show you post to anybody and you start all over again. So it's better to post every day and get to a hundred posts than to worry about what do I post this one time that blows people's mind. Don't worry about one post, worry about a hundred posts. Just post all the time, okay? Why it works, visibility. Build the know, like, and trust. Again, you're showing that you're human, you're a regular person. Previews the experience. So if you're selling like I was, like I was selling a course. So I would show pictures of myself, like looking over the course, like watching the course and say like, man, this course is really awesome. I'm showing the work. It's like, I always study it. Like I'm, I'm up three o'clock in the morning studying the course. And people were like, well, what course is that? It still brought curiosity. People were asking me, well, what's that? What is that? How are you, what are you learning there? Getting comments, right? Build authority because you're showing the work. And I, I've shown pictures of myself, like working and stuff like that. It builds authority. Okay. He really does this. He doesn't have like a staff, like making it for him or anything like that. Right. So creating intimacy as well, because you're peeling back the curtain. You're showing that all of this is real. It's not like I'm just like some fake, you know, a ghost somewhere. Uh, I'm a real person working on a real business. So it creates that intimacy. It creates that, that effect of like, okay, that's, I can do that too. Okay. If that's a real person doing this, then maybe I can do it too. All right. Here's some examples. <laughs> Me hard at work thinking about this masterclass. Matter of fact, this very masterclass you know, I posted about it. Do you have your ticket yet? It's me thinking about the masterclass, focusing all hard, right? Here's one that I actually use. Like I said, I posted about that same course that I was selling, me going through it. Oh, I go through it every time. Made me over 30K in the last four months. All, and I got all these comments and people were asking me, what's the course about? How much does it cost? You know, it's like, you just post about stuff you're doing and it gets interest. Share the value. What does it look like? A lot of you already know what value is. And most of you believe that value is how to teaching stuff, right? Uh, you see people say that all the time. I give value. Um, but I'm here to tell you teaching is one part. Sure. You can teach valuable tips and tricks and strategies. And that's great. That gets a lot of attention. That'll get you engagement comments and, and start getting your name out there. But there's also belief shifts. I call it myth busting. So people believe one thing and your content gets them to believe something new. Those belief shifts create this incredible dopamine hit. And it's like, holy crap. It's like, oh my God, I got the craziest value ever. I can't believe you just said that. I can't believe, like Trisha's here. Trisha, she said something about a, a, a video game right? That I believe for pretty much my entire life that I was like, okay, this is the best one. But her take on it was like, no, no, no. this is the best one. And here's why. And it was a belief shift. <laughs> it blew my mind. I was like, I never thought of it like that. If you can create that effect with your audience, those are very valuable because it, it creates value, right? Sharing the value, but it also establishes you as some type of authority because it's like, 
how like you just changed my whole thing my mindset is completely shifted so the way that i would uh, uh, uh implore you to do that is think of sacred cows what sacred cows are is whatever in your industry that's widely believed most people think okay facebook ads most people are like i'm gonna run facebook ads i will sit there and prove to you all day long if facebook ads are a bad idea and those belief shifts that people have like wow i never thought of it like that you see what i'm saying so that's very valuable to people now they look at me like you must know what the hell you're talking about let me follow more of your stuff right so that's myth busting and it's very powerful so if you master that very valuable post okay strategy or tactic very similar to how to stuff step by step list post the top five ways to do this uh step by step for you to do that people love that share your story those are very valuable why it works establishes credibility it creates reciprocity so people like getting stuff like for free like they love that and it creates this feeling like i'm a, i should give something back to you because you're always giving me this awesome free stuff right reciprocity most people are not jerks they'll they'll try to get give back right you're giving them something they'll give back right and it positions you as a leader and it's seeding the product so whatever it is that you're selling in your niche whatever the service is the product whatever it may be it seeds it because they're getting little bits and pieces of it at a time and they're thinking man this is great stuff like uh what else do you have i have this actual like full course or full coaching or full you know whatever it actually has this and more what I need to get into that. I need to look into that because this little one piece that I got was so amazing. All right. Examples of it. Uh, I have a story here on the right where I talked about how I worked as a forklift driver for 50 hours a week. On the left, I have the five steps to affiliate marketing success. It's kind of like a step-by-step -step thing. And you can kind of get a good idea of, you know, basic, the basic stuff. And both of them were text, you know, posts, but, uh, that's why I did those things. Just kind of give you a free thing. And if you look here, even on the left, I'm gonna go back for one second. Even on the left here, when I did the five steps, uh, I left out step four and five. And I said, you will have to join my Facebook group to see the rest. So it was like a call to action at the end. So <clears throat> the goal of that one was really to get people into my Facebook group. But uh, yeah, it still worked. <laughs> Another thing you want to do with these story posts is don't like have a call to action at the end of your story. Like on the right here, um, I just had a story and it was like a funny story and it just got some engagement there. But uh, if you tell a story, you're like, okay, now buy my thing. People feel like, wait a minute, I liked your story. I thought it was cool. And now you're like telling me to buy something. It's like, oh man, you know, <laughs> it's like you bamboozled me. So feel pe people don't like that. Um, and here's my favorite engage with questions people don't give a crap about you i want to like i want to be very blunt me either okay one of the the great realizations of any marketer is to realize that nobody cares about you any 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 anything about you uh, that's like me 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 look at this great stuff that i do and everything like that it's going to be okay you're going to get some engagement but where people really shoot off and like engage with like crazy. And I, I love these kinds of posts is questions because people really care about themselves way more than they care about you. So everybody wants to give their two cents. Everybody's a smart ass. Everybody's a genius. Everybody's everything. Um, so when you ask very skilled questions uh, and you kind of like, um, you know, What's the word I'm looking for? And you kind of lead them in a way it's like, hey, comment below. Tell me what you think about this. Hey, what, what do you think about that? Or um, one that I like is uh, as a uh, entrepreneurship is easy, true or false. And now they have to like give me a true or false answer or, you know, elaborate on why they think I'm stupid. It doesn't matter. Comment. <laughs> just I'm just trying to get you to comment. Say something controversial. Say, you know, hey, guys, uh, what do you think about, uh, you know, uh, McDonald's? I think it's the worst place in the world, blah, 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 you know, whatever, just something to polarize and split the audience in half and get them to, what do you guys think? And get them to start commenting. And I think you're the dumbest person a lot. That's what I think. You know, uh, there was a few this, this, this week in the group where I commented, uh, or I posted simple stuff. Like what's some, what's a movie, that you can see like every day without getting bored of it. I think I think Amanda's shaking her head. She remembers that. But 
but my fiance posted like something like what's a movie that scared the crap out of you the first time you saw it you know i'm training her now but it's, it's simple stuff you know but all it really does is get people to comment they want to give their two cents and because we understand the strategy what did we do we went in there and when they commented we replied why because this week we were selling the master class so it was like hey we're going to get them to comment on all this stuff we're going to reply and that way when we start pitching the master class they see it cuz what what's the point of pitching something if like it's just in a vacuum nobody sees it so you got to set up those pins in order to knock them down so that's why we were doing very simple post everybody loves giving their two cents little do they know <laughs> right little do they know that it's very strategic we're doing that for a reason you know um so what it looks like i'm thinking about creating this is a good one if you guys are confused about your products your offers uh maybe you want to add bonuses to your affiliate offers maybe you want to create your own little offer like an ebook or a mini course or something uh coming up with it on your own is not a good idea because you have no idea if people really want it but instead if in your group you say hey guys so i'm thinking about creating such and such what do you think do you, would you pay for something like that ask them if you have like 15 people be like yeah that sounds good guess what you have 15 customers they didn't even you didn't even make the thing yet and they've already told you yeah i'd buy that so okay great time to go make it right uh survey the room Figure out, this is marketing, figure out where their head is at. What do you guys struggle with the most? Uh, what is your, your number one question? What do you feel is going to get you over the hump? What do you, all those things, study your audience, figure out what are they saying? What are they thinking? There's an old saying in marketing that whomever understands their audience the best wins. So use your Facebook profile or your Facebook group, whichever one you're primarily marketing through as a way to study your audience. What do they want? What do they think? What's stopping them? What's holding them back? The better you understand them, the better your marketing is gonna be. Now, who in here is blah, blah, blah. For me, my target audience is beginner affiliate marketers. So a lot of times I'll go into groups or something and say like, hey, who in here is new to affiliate marketing? And I'll get like 50 million responses like me. I'm the, <laughs> you know, like how hard is it to find them? This is what makes Facebook so powerful and effective over like SEO or anything that takes so long because finding leads on Facebook is as easy as adding friends. That's it. Those are leads. You add a friend, you have a lead. The end. How do you know that's your lead? You ask them. You go into a group and you say, hey, is anybody in here this? Me. Okay. Here's a friend request. I'm going to show you an example after this. And I'm also going to show you an example of how you don't have to post every day. Because a lot of times, well, I don't want to post in groups like every day. It's exhausting. I'm going to show you a hack for that. Okay. You don't have to post every day. Um, so why does this work? Insight into current situation, desired situation. What, what are they thinking? Where are they stuck? Where's the pain? I want to know everything because that's going to help me in my marketing. It helps you validate new ideas like we talked about, right? You're thinking of making some little mini course, a product, something, some uh, coaching. You want to do some coaching. What, you know, ask them if I did this, would you guys pay for it? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Great way to validate your ideas. And you get hands raised. That's my favorite kind of post is the hand raiser. Like I said, who in here is new to affiliate marketing? I'll do it. <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, me. Okay, great. Come on over. Here's the friend request. <laughs> you know, that simple. You have leads now. Okay. Here's some examples of some that I do. On the right, here's a good one. On the right, you see a post. Uh, does this look familiar? Planning the next infamous masterclass. What's it going to be? And you see who the winner is? How to get easy Facebook traffic without ads. Got 12 votes. You're sitting in it right now. <laughs> so... I'm not some like creative genius that just thought of this on a mountaintop somewhere with a like Shaolin monk or something. My audience told me that they wanted me to make this masterclass. So I made it and I sold it. You can do this every month. 
So the more you grow your Facebook group and you quiz them like every month and say, hey, what, what do you think the next thing should be, right? Every month you have something you can sell. Imagine if you have a thousand member group and you have a hundred dollar thing that you're going to sell and a hundred of them buy it. You can make 10,000 every month. And people think that 10K a month is super hard. I just, I just spelled it out for you just like that. It's that simple. Now it's going to take time to build a thousand member group, but it's that simple. Okay. It's not even, it's 10% of your group members. It's not even that many people. All right. Uh, on the left here, you'll see a very popular post <laughs> that I just talked about. It has 83 comments on it. Who here is just getting started with affiliate marketing? Like I said, that's my target audience, right? It was written on December 30th, 2020. And just so that I show you a bit of, oh, where am I going here? So I show you an example. Like I said, you don't have to post every day right? You don't have to post every single day. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. So I'm going to go over here to groups. I already know that that's in the ClickFunnels group. Okay. I posted on the ClickFunnels group on December 30th. Now let's see where it is. It may be really far down now. Okay. No, that's not it. That's another one. But okay. So here's what I'll do. Facebook group hack. Go to the search bar inside the group. I'll search myself. Click on myself. Where is that post? Who in here is just getting started with affiliate marketing? There it is. I found it. Okay. Now here's the thing about Facebook groups and how you can kind of hack the algorithm again. The way that Facebook groups work, the most recently engaged post always gets pushed back to the top. Okay. So what a lot of people do is they'll post and as people comment, They'll go through and they'll reply to every single comment the very first day that they post. Well, that's not a good idea because every comment is a potential to push this post back to the top of the, of the group. So that's a bad idea. Leave some unanswered, leave them unanswered and reply to them over time. Okay. So there might be some in here. I didn't reply to yet. Here's one right here. Matthew Shane Dearman. He says me said, nice to meet you okay so i just replied to him okay and now i will reload this group okay guess who's at the top now when new members join this group immediately they're going to see me there i can do this every day okay and i have been since december 30th i've been doing this almost every day just pushing my post back to the top back to the top back to the top Okay. And as people come into the group, they see my ugly face and they're like, yeah, me, I'm new. Guess what? I know they're new because they just joined the group. Right. They comment. I reply again. I keep this post pushed up every single day. That's an asset. That's like your billboard. You don't have to write a new one all the time. You can just push the same one back up. I can leave this here for a year and just keep pushing it back up all the time. Okay, so you don't have to be some genius. You don't have to do all this over the top stuff. Um, so that's a little hack there I shared with you. I, I discovered that after, uh, after, after I was like, I'm too lazy to post every day. <laughs> there's got to be a better way. <laughs> so I realized I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I could just reply little by little and it keeps going back up. And I like, it works. It works like a charm. So there you go. All right. So um, next thing, engage with invitations. This is another really, 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 really powerful one. I love this one. Okay. Invitations is like call to actions. So what does it look like? Who wants my blah, blah, blah. Right. And you're going to get a lot of people saying me, 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 me. Right. Same thing. Reply to them, send them that free thing, give them the link or whatever in messenger. But now you've engaged. Right. So it just keeps on uh, you know, sharing posts together, uh, story about my discovery, comment, blah, 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 down below. You're going to get a lot of that, blah, 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 whatever you put. I'm in, uh, yes, me, you know, whatever you put in the quotes, comment this down below. Uh, so why it works, it creates crazy engagement. It's like freebies. Like people love getting free stuff, scripts, courses, whatever you make, eBooks, whatever, right? 
the same thing they say with sales funnels, make like a freebie to generate leads. Same thing we're doing with post, right? Uh, it helps identify who your target market is. So they're the ones saying me, I want that. Okay, so they must be interested in the stuff that I'm potentially selling. So great, we want that. Uh, helps you come up with product ideas. So the ones that get the most attention, well, this is something people must really be looking for. They must really want this, okay? I'll give you some examples. Here's one on the left where I talked about uh, Facebook organic masterclass and I had this like cheat sheet made up. Uh, I think Amanda, <laughs> Amanda remembers this one, had this like cheat sheet made up of some magic words. I call it magic words to use in your posts and stuff. Uh, and there in the picture, you see comment magic down below. And I got some people saying magic on there. Um, I have one that was real simple, got 42 comments, a really good one. Who wants my four square organic framework that helped me generate $106,894 in 2020 without funnels, ads, or an email list? Well, people were like, holy shit. Yes, I want this thing. You know, so it got a lot of comments. A lot of people say, yeah, give me that. That's awesome. But what we're really trying to do is get those replies so that we can hack that Facebook algorithm again. So Facebook thinks we must be close friends because they're engaging. I'm engaging back with them. We're talking in Messenger. We're having this whole back and forth, right? Um, the one on the left is on January 26th. The one on the right is on January 29th. You can see the one on the left got 13 comments. The one on the right got 42 comments. So you can see just within the span of what, three days, the difference in comments and the difference in reach and engagement because I was working on it because it was like, I wanna to try to get this thing, you know, the master class is coming up. So I'm building up hype, building up hype, get more and more reach, more and more engagement every time. All right. So with that being said,